What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm back to talk to you about the greater good. More so, the Psychic Awakening greater good. As we dive into the eight, the eight bodyguard battlesuits for Farsight within his enclaves. So the eight have always been pretty awesome to me, because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like a callback, or like a nod to like the seven samurai, except this is the eight battlesuits. Um, and they all have their own personalities, uh, for the most part, except for one, which is all robotic. But we'll get to him later. Him? It? We'll get to that guy later. Uh, for now, I'm going to start with like a very minute um, description of who this uh, battlesuit pilot is. And then I'll get into the actual rundown of the points, war gear, and all the signature systems that they have available made to them. So the eight are a very weird type of, I guess, detachment, because you can only include them into your army if it's battleforged, and it takes up a super heavy auxiliary detachment. And not just that, you're also losing minus uh, three command points. So this really sucks, because um, it's very limited into how you can play them in your games, unless you're going unbound or your playgroup's okay with you just adding them willy-nilly. But the thing is that you have to take the eight exactly as they come. You can't switch out their loadouts, you can't give them any other signature systems. They are the eight and they come that way. Essentially, you're playing with eight, well, more like six commanders. Because uh, you also have a Riptide and a Broadside Battlesuit thrown into the mix. But these guys do take up a lot of points. Uh, overall, I think you're, it's 8 characters, 14 drones, and you're paying a total of 1,120 points for these guys. So if you're trying to be competitive in any way, this is not the way to go. Um, especially since you still got to fill up troops, and just to make it more synergetic, there, there's a lot you got to do. If anything, you're playing this for narrative reasons, or maybe if you're doing Apocalypse and you have a thousand points to spare, why not toss in the eight? Now, it seems like it's all negatives if you're using the eight in battle. However, you do have a few kind of pick-me-ups. For example, you get a sub-tenant called the Devastating Counter-Strike. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model with this tenant against a unit that is within six inches of you, you can re-roll the wound roll of a one. So, I mean, Farsight Enclaves are going to be more of a mid to short range type of Tau army, which is very strange, because um, normally you want to play the far game. You want to outshoot your opponent, because if you're getting charged or in charge ranged, you've made a mistake somewhere. However, with the Enclaves, that's kind of where they shine, that's where they do the most uh, damage. So, if you are within 6 inches of an enemy, you can at least reroll the wound roll to hopefully kill that enemy and not get bogged down in close combat. So now that that's kind of out of the way, let's actually go one by one as to who exactly the 8 are. Beginning with Commander Farsight himself. Obviously we know who he is, he is the renegade of the Tau Empire, or, in the eyes of the Tau of the Farsight Enclaves, he is the hero of the Tau. Um, pretty much, he is destined to hopefully free the Tau from the oppressive mindsets of the Ethereals. At least, that's my viewpoints. Because the Ethereals are really... Uh, I don't know. You can make the argument that they're guiding the Tau, and they've gotten to the point of where they are, technologically speaking, because of the Ethereals. But at the same time, there's there's something else out there that's kind of keeping the Tau from making their own decisions and whatnot, whether it be for good or evil. I don't know. I'm going too much on a tangent. But anyway, that's Farsight. We've got a whole 40 facts on him. I think it's like a two, three parter. Uh, so check that out. But anyway, let's continue on to Commander Bravestorm. So Bravestorm is a twisted and mangled up fire warrior who has been interred into his battlesuit, kind of like a dreadnought. He's, his body's really messed up, but he continues the fight with a shield generator, a flamer, and a plasma rifle on his XV 
802 Crisis Iridium Battlesuit. So essentially, better protected. Commander Brightsword is the next one up, and he is my favorite one because he is equipped with a pair of fusion blasters. These fusion blasters can then become the almighty fusion blades, which is used to destroy the most hulking of war engines and monsters throughout the enclaves. Commander Shas O. Shavastos is a very interesting case, because he was one of the first fire warriors to have the pure tide neurochip implanted into him. Unfortunately, something went wrong, and normally the um, Tau would just like lobotomize these guys. However, Farsight said no, he's too much of a genius to be lobotomized, so he put him in stasis, and all these years later, finally, they came out with a cure. So that is when Ovesa then recalibrated the neurochip and brought back the genius mind of Shavastos back into action. So now this tactical genius is out fighting for the enclaves in many different battlefields. Shas O Arakan is very peculiar. He specializes in anti infantry weaponry and he's always trying to improve his craft, so much so that he even makes his other colleagues use hollow vids to basically go back into past battles, relive them, and find out how they can improve their tactical genius. Um, so, yeah, this guy just loves to be out in a battle. Another peculiar member of the eight is the broadside known as Shazvre Ablotai 9-0. And what makes this guy stand out is that there's no Tau Fire Warrior piloting it. It is all AI. So this just goes to show you how far artificial intelligence for the Tau Empire has come. That they could essentially use a drone's artificial intelligence that's been bolstered to actively fight in the battlefield and perform equally or if not greater than that of other Tau commanders. That just goes to show you how tactically brilliant the Tau are. Sub Commander Torchstar is the youngest commander for the eight and she essentially defected from the Tau. Now she's fighting recklessly on the battlefield burning her enemies to ash. And the last member of the eight is the pilot of the massive Riptide Battlesuit. And once again, it is not an ordinary Tau that pilots it, it is an Earthcast member. It is none other than Ovesa, the one who essentially cured the Pure Tide Neurochip degradation in the previous member of the Eight. So this genius is actually going out into the battle, risking his life to better the Enclaves. If that doesn't show you how much tenacity and determination this fire warrior has, well, it's not even a fire warrior, it's an Earthcast warrior, then that shows you that, hey, these Tau, they got it. Now for this next segment, we're just going to go down the line from Member of the Eight, showcasing the awesome abilities that they have, starting with Brightsword. So Brightsword has the Warscaper drones, which make it even harder to be able to charge into him because you have to subtract two from the charge rolls made from enemy units as long as they're within 12 which that makes sense so this little drone here is gonna say no 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 to you charging orcs brave storm essentially gets a six up feel no pain with the advanced support cocoon while shavastos has the pure tide and gram general chip which is a special thing that lets him do this once per battle uh, you can either re-roll a hit roll, a wound roll, or a damage roll. Um, and you could do this just once per battle, but still, it's it's pretty good. Because whenever you need to come in clutch with like a wound or a hit, this is your essential free command point to re-roll it. And on top of this, any time your opponent uses a stratagem, you get to roll a die, and on a 6, you gain a command point. It's pretty cool, but you can only gain up to one command point per battle round, so it could come in clutch, it could not, but you have to have your model be alive and on the battlefield to keep doing this. So if like Shavastos is on Manta, or he died previous, unfortunately you can't keep racking up command points. Which, it, it makes sense. This next ability comes for Arakan, which is the Repulsor Impact Field. 
after an enemy unit has charged, then you roll a d6, and on a 2 plus, the enemy unit suffers a single mortal wound. It seems like a minute ability, but this could come in handy, especially when you get charged by a single wound model that can literally mean the difference between living or dying. The next one is for Torchstar, and she's got the Neuroweb System Jammer, which has been a favorite ability of mine for a while now. I think it was a stratagem, or still is. Anyway, enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as reinforcements cannot be set up within 12 inches of this model. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against this model's unit, subtract one from the roll. So, it's pretty cool because if you are going to fire at her or you're planning to deep strike and charge that character, um, essentially it's going to make that a little bit harder. Now, Oblotai is where it, the abilities really shine for me. Because obviously, like I said previous, there's no living creature piloting it. And it reflects that with the ability known as No Longer Flesh and Blood. This is when a weapon has hit you, you then subtract one from the damage characteristic of that weapon to a minimum of one for that attack. So, let's say you get hit and you take two damage, I mean, you're just a, I'm not going to say like a pile of bolts, but essentially you're just all machine, so obviously you can't hit any vitals or anything like that, so it makes sense that it's doing less damage. The other thing he has is advanced scan feeds, which means that this model doesn't really suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons, um, because obviously the pilot doesn't have to account for that, because there is no pilot. So... Really cool abilities for Ablotai. Um, really, really cool. For Ovesa, you get all the standard stuff that a Riptide would, but he also comes with the Earth Cast Pilot Array. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by this model, you can re-roll a hit roll of 1. When this model would lose a wound as a result of the Nova Reactor, roll a d6 and a 4 plus that wound is not lost. Really great, especially because you really want to be doing that Nova Reactor each and every turn possible to get the most out of your Riptides. So, uh, Nova Reactors cause a mortal wound to activate, so with this, you essentially have a 50-50 chance of not losing that mortal wound, uh, which is really, really great, especially since Riptides do have a degrading stat line, so that could mean the difference between hitting on a 4, hitting on a 5, etc. Now there's still a lot more to the 8. You have a whole bunch of drones accompanying them, shield drones, um, missile drones, there, there's a lot to it. Um, they also have different weapons and war gear, but again, this is most of them just have the same stuff that they did previous. Uh, they did get upgraded with a few different things here and there, but overall it's the same 8 that we've known for a while now. So I think I went over all the important stuff. If there was anything else that I missed that was a glaring upgrade or a massive change that they did, let me know in the comments down below. But I think that's where I'm going to call the video for today. It seems like they at least made an effort to make the 8 playable and enjoyable. But like I said previous, it's just too much points to sink into a list and make it worthwhile or at least competitive. If you're using them, it's strictly for like a lore or a themed battle. Um, they're not bad, but obviously some of these commanders outshine others. Um, I still think Oblatai is amazing. And the thing that really sucks about this is that they kind of made it seem that you could only play the 8 as the entire 8. Like you can't just take like Ovesa and Brave... Was it Brave Storm? Like, you have to take all eight of them, <laughs> which sucks a lot. Um, but, I don't know. Uh, again, if you're not doing tournaments or anything like that, I'm sure your buddies will let you play two out of three or just bring one of them with. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for today. If you guys have played with the eight before or currently with the new rules, how did that end up for you? Because I have a feeling, not very well. <laughs> Uh, stay tuned, because the next coming days, I'm going to be putting out a review for the stratagems and the rest of the new stuff that came out for the Tao and the Psychic Awakening. I've already done pretty much everything that has to do with the Enclaves as of right now, so go ahead into the channel and check that out. But for now, that's all I've got. 
This has been The Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.